We ready to go live? Do this shit. Going live. Think we're live?
coach, the first on the field, and he rolls away on the space of the line. Really nice point for Alba, he's going to do the whole, for that break in the first time. First time out, and now he's going to get a chance to go back out and try and take it back. Chevron coming to his game, off the back of a more than recent win against Alba, and he's going to do it really, really well. But of course it was Facing up against a company, we do expect it. I do this season. I don't know. 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 I don't uh, Chevron and Alba both going to be flying to try and have a shot the line. two teams that are very similar to the the pass is a little casual. Another backhand break this time. Oh, can it be rescued and redeemed with a layer? Yes! It is. Oh, it's almost like they're trying to be 
makes any mistakes to make everything look more impressive because Matthew with a very basic drop and Liam Williams laying out the him to save his watch and uh, yeah what a, what a strange point the greatest attempt to flash in the
guys had two of those now. Two of those to go for a score. This is really
So Appel landing well out of bounds. Be bricked by Joel Terry. It's plain old match versus Hostack, but with a bit of poach off into the lanes from the handler marks for Chevron. Morell and Hodgett just sitting softly away. Nice gainer to exploit that to Webb. But a straight up stone cold drop for Andrew Dick. And Hodgett picks up quickly. But a give go action alongside Morell. Oh, lovely flick just out into the space to be run onto perfectly. The throw's really working off until that moment. There's an attempt for the greatest, but unfortunately didn't quite get the grip that he desired for that one, Roger Williams. Yeah, the throw is a little too far. It looks like Williams apologised to Morell, but I think it was just a little too far from Morell. Nice idea, but just put a bit too much on it. Yeah, well, maybe a bit of commentator's curse, just as I was complimenting the throwing form. It comes unglued. That one's going to be a ripper, though. <laughs> just about held on to by Alistair McNeil. No one really attacking the deep space, but happy to pop it through. Williams working up that far sideline, but it's Mackie underneath. Williams now still driving things. The strip called. Hodgett just getting the disc away in an untoward manner. But does prevent the deep shot going immediately to McNeil. Violation elsewhere on the field. So we'll roll back the tape. Leon Williams has been so good for Alba in this game. They've got a lot of players who've been around for, for years and played with each other for years since, since the club started, really. But Leon Williams, under-24 mixed player this time around, uh, has really been improving every year, growing in prominence, and has been uh, had a really good game so far. And, of course, the GB Mix team had a, a pretty decent time of it at the under-24s that was at this very same field complex. It's been a busy year for Ultimate at the High Field Sport Complex. Here at the University of Nottingham. McNeil up line to Terry. Sliding style. Oh, and that's a visionary shot across the top, but it cannot connect with the desired target. Gregor Stewart flies through the air, but gets nothing but a fistful of air. Yeah, it's a nice idea, but it's such a difficult throw to execute, that fading back shoulder throw, because Stewart has no chance of kind of catching up to it it has to be pinpoint and he has to be in exactly the right spot if either thing is wrong there's no way of catching up to it because of the angle on the disc and it just didn't quite come off yeah perhaps something a little bit softer might have connected well but a squandered opportunity there for Alba and a potential moment for Chevron to take half in a dominant fashion that would be 8-5 
to start on offense for the second. Dixon. Nice flat and easy one for Morell. Taking a little while for the options to develop downfield, so just containment. Big old poach exploit on the far side for Steve Dixon, though. No one really to connect. Takes the reset. Oh, look at that deep shot emerging from Dixon, but doesn't like the look of it. Just throws underneath instead. Turn it through to Morell. Oh, and surely that's the break there, but is it a bit overcooked? No, it is not. Benjamin Barak finishes off the first half. 8-5 for Chevron Action Flash. Yeah, it's a dominant performance in that first half from Chevron. Playing really, really well. Offensively, it looks like everything's working. Everything's clicking. Very... It seems like a strange call from Alba defensively on that last point to me because one thing that Chevron have been really good at in this game is attacking those inside lanes. And Alba were doing a forced middle there. They were forcing it towards the middle of the field. But when you're doing that, you're giving up inside lanes. You're wanting the offense to take inside lanes. And when they've been exploiting it so well, it seems a strange choice to just let them take it to me. But uh, take it, Chevron did. And they go into half 8-5 up with several breaks and in a wonderful position. Uh, for the second half of this game. So some really blistering stats here in this game so far. Obviously, the average passes per turn, especially for the O-line of Chev, is pretty staggering, Sean. 47. That's, uh, that's pretty... Oh, no. 9.7. I was going to say 47 is really high, but it's still... No, no. Average passes per turnover for the O line is 47. Average passes per time for the D line is 9.7, slightly less effective. But looking at the other side of the board, 12.5 the average pass per turn for Albert. That is uh, night and day. Yeah, 47 passes. I mean, you can see total passes by the Chevron O line is 47, which means they've thrown 47 passes and only turned it once. It's a pretty fantastic execution from them the whole first half. And. It's not surprising looking at those stats given what we've seen on the field. You know, without seeing them, you look at it and go, the Chevro line has been playing extremely impressively. Looks like everything's coming off. A lot of what they're trying is working. They've got the deep shots going, and when the deep shots are taken away, using a zone or when the, the Alba players are backing them, they're just taking those inside channels every single time. Well, certainly the previous games for Alba, they have had some moments where their deep connections really just haven't been working for them. They certainly have uh, taken away the license to shoot for Joel Terry. That's been, uh, been a key part. But we're going to take a, a brief moment to pause our audio and reconfigure our tech setup. But bear with. <laughs> So as the bagpipes play on the far side of the field to try and rally the spirits of Alba, who trail considerably in this game. They started on offense, immediately gave up that first break of score. And it really has been all about Chevron having a wonderful time of it so far. But so talk us through these young players from Chevron Action Flash. Are they all homegrown talent or are they picked from other squads, Sean? Yeah, there's a few that have kind of homegrown in a sense. Uh, Morel obviously has come through Flux, uh, kind of where Chevron have taken a lot of players. Coming through Matthew Bevan, who's uh, on the team, number 37. Matthew Bevan has been a uh, stalwart for Chev for a long time, and he's brought through some of these young players. But they have others that have come from uh, other teams, kind of lower down. They've added, uh, I know Sam Criddle uh, is at University in Cardiff, I believe. So he's, uh, he's come over with the, with the Bristol set. Uh, Sweetenham, uh, I think, came through Flux, although I might be wrong on that, but I know he's also at University in, in Cardiff as well. So uh, it's a, a well-worn path from Cardiff University to Chevron. I mean, we had back in the day was uh, Sam Bowen, I believe, was at Cardiff University with Josh Cox and Kelly. They were both there, so they both played for Chevron while they were there. So uh, there's some good players coming through Chevron system, but there always seems to be some good players coming through Chevron system. They're very good at blooding youngsters, giving them a chance bring them into the team. Cam Weir, I think, is uh, Manchester, originally from Manchester, uh, obviously where Chevron have been was started, uh, now largely based on Nuneaton in the Midlands, which is uh, closer to where, where Bevan is. But yeah, some, it's a big roster. We haven't seen, I would say, we haven't seen equal pitch time for everybody. We've definitely seen kind of the players you would expect more than we've seen some of the younger lads, but 
I suppose that's to be expected when you get into the, the business end of a tournament like this. Yeah, it feels a little bit bizarre to be at semi-finals already at this stage on a Saturday. But of course, not even the last game slot. It's just the Open Division taking the first spot in terms of the scheduling. Most teams starting their day early doors here in Nottingham. So that one lands just gently out of bounds and we brought into the brick mark by Callum Spears. So this for the buy one, get one free, as we like to call it affectionately. Haynes immediately setting off to the deep space and allowing some poaching underneath. Dick trying to just marshal, but that's a huge block rising out from the pack. Stuart Jinx. So a big opportunity for Alba here. Joel Terry to pick us up. Running a power line to start. Jinx getting a lot of contact from Robbie Haynes there. Action rolling out of the side. Just bringing the uh, emotions down. Yeah, it looks like some annoyance about that bid. I mean, there is a fair amount of contact from Haynes on Jinx. Uh, Jinx, after getting that D, the tall Australian knocked it out of the air. But, uh, yeah, they're having a discussion about this. I'm not sure really what the discussion is other than I didn't like that very much. It's a longer chat than you would expect. As I say, I think a bit of conversation to try and bring the emotional level down. Just saying, you know, that wasn't really a fair one. How useful that discussion is in the Atlin live play, I'm not sure. I think that's uh, an accepted foul immediately. Or maybe, it's, or maybe it's a contested foul out. Possibly. Because if Jinx lands out of bounds because of the virtue of Haynes' contact. Force out. Yeah, force out. Or a foul out. Back in with Jinx. Terry trying to stride up line. Williams underneath. Nice collection. But not really the continuation all the way across the pitch. Morel trying to sneak around the back of Joel Terry. Of course, those two teammates this season for GB Open. Feather everyone up to Williams. Now Steedman. Oh, but that's a huge hand block denial from Callum Spears. And I believe those two are also former teammates. If I think they've, they've both, both played for Smog, am I right? I think so. I think so, yeah. I think Steedman's definitely pl uh, played for Smog. Spears, obviously, until this year, played for Smog. Was a long-time Smog player. So I think you are correct there. I just know that the uh, encyclopedic knowledge stood next to me. We'll have all the facts for me. Morel opening up an absolute tank backhand into the path of Sweetenham. And an easy goal because that one went so far through the pack. And there indeed, Samuel Criddle collects for 9-5. This is not what we expected, especially considering Alba's performance at this stage last season. No, they played really well at this point last season. But as we said, they did lose to Chevron in the regional final. I think they lost by four or five in that game. So Chevron clearly with the upper hand at the moment. Alba, I don't believe, had Kami Agnew in that game. So they're a little stronger now than they were obviously with him but they put out a power line there to try and get that point we saw terry we saw williams we saw dick all been playing on the o-line out on that d-line to try and prevent that kind of buy one get one free point as you called it hanny and uh there looks like there's a bit of discussion uh between the leaders at halfway here i wonder whether that is about kind of some of the the tenor of some of these discussions where they've been a little a little fractious maybe that's Mark Penny speaking with Mark Simpson, Joel Terry and Leo Micklem from Alba to try and iron it out. Well, there was a real genuine and meaningful opportunity there to get the break of score, which is the first opportunity really at all in this game for Alba. So that power line did generate a little bit of action but not a flash of a score as we see a little bit more discussion happening in the center of the field. This to be the big clipboarded Matt Bevan coming in to have a chat now. I mean, it's got to be off that call with the contact on the far side where uh, Robbie Haynes ra came in rather feistily against Stuart Jinx. Uh, you would guess so, but it's been going on for uh, longer than you would expect. I, d I really am not sure what the discussion is here. They're pointing around a lot and there's a lot of shrugging and hands open. I don't really know what's going on. 
someone called the wrong gender or something? I don't know. <laughs> well, of course, one of the best things you could say about the Open Division, in some people's opinion, is the fact that actually it matters not what your gender identification is. Anyone can play in the Open Division. There's no requirements, no testing, no nothing, no rules. Just everybody and anybody. But there does seem to be a bit more discussion right in front of us on the sideline with Stuart Jinks. And, but number 15, Tom Hodgett, not Robbie Haynes. So maybe that seems to be the thing. Hodgett and Bevan, two of the leaders of Chevron, so I don't know whether they're talking to Jinks to try and like calm everything down. But, uh, yeah, it's been, it's, got, it's been going on a long time. Oh, yeah, it, was, it was obviously contact on the play, and it was probably too much contact, but uh, quite a long discussion for what seemed like, you know, just one play. Well, we're used to seeing players slide out of bounds with a lot of momentum, but I think, yeah, too much contact is probably a slight understating of what happened on that far sideline. Tick underneath. Nice shot through. Stewart. Oh, tambourine catch for Cameron Mackey. Through to Williams. Dishes off and away. This is solid patience from Alba. A shout from the sideline of tighter, tighter. Just trying to grind through now with speed. This time Phil Webb. To Mackey. Williams just trying to go to work. Webb going up line. That one's got plenty of air underneath it. But Joel Terry with eyes on the prize all the way through to his hands. Is he going to try and hit the break side? No, just up line. Grind for Cam Mackey. Expecting someone to be available in front of him. And elite. Oh, <laughs> that's such a nice little spiral move. You don't see those come off too often. But when they do, the defender just looks so dismayed. Yeah, Joel Terry literally ran in a circle. <laughs> it's one of those things, as you say, that you kind of see beginners do. Running in a circle in front of the Frisbees to try and get it. But rather than running in a circle aimlessly, you could see Joel Terry had Seb Hart in a position he didn't want to be in and just exploited the fact that he tried to take away one position. Ran in a circle, Seb Hart, looking very upset that it worked. But there we go. Nice offensive execution for Alba for that hold. So it's 9-6 to Chevron now. And Alba got close on that last point, on that last D point. Uh, Cam Mackey back out, sorry, Cammy Agnew back out on uh, on D. So playing more D than O now. And they've put Joel Terry, who has been playing a vital role for the O-line, but more commonly known as the defender, certainly how he played for GB this summer. Uh, they put him back out on the D line because at this stage they know it's pretty important to try and get one back. And it was a very unfortunate thing, actually. Joel Terry wasn't playing in the final at EUC because he'd picked up an injury on his shoulder. So it's nice to see him back on the field. Because I think it's fair to say GB could have used him in that gold medal match where um, it seemed like the Belgians just knew where GB wanted to be most of the time. But, of course, they are, they've become renowned this season for studying their opponents. But that's a beautiful throw out of Callum Spears. Might have a little bit too much air underneath it. A big tussle. Coming through on the left side of it, though. Robbie Haynes unable to connect. Great defense played. Terry. Pick up field. To see Sweeney just trotting back towards the stack. Suspiciously free on the underneath. Steedman will collect. Throws a nice fading, curving flick around. Timing is there. Going to have to catch it anyway, but that one will come back. <laughs> a little celebration from the sideline. From the opposition, no less. Back into the hands of Stuart Jinx. That was a lovely throw. So, slightly loose positioning from the stack for Alba. Not the neatest we've seen in terms of their structure, but finding their timing well enough. 
Cats will count starting to rise. Stephen is massively poached off, but he's just going to chuck one and hope. Surely that's going to land out of bounds. And it is indeed no opportunity to make a play underneath it at all. Yeah, Joel Terry kind of was coming across for a swing. Stephen filled in that space. Terry was kind of stuck basically right in front of the disc with his mark on him. Very tough position for Jinx to be in. Uh, that shot to the end zone was never quite going to come off, I don't think. But Chev now centering the disc to end. Uh, Robbie Haynes in their own end zone. So Cam Witt opens up that lefty backhand, finding Morel. It's nice ease of movement. Both sides favouring a horizontal stack rather than trying to clear, clear space laterally. Fantastic coverage in the handless space, eventually just about escaping to Spears. Colt Hammer. Oh, Scuba to try and hit that break side, and it's a lovely find. We're popping it back into the hands of Hodgett. Can they find their way all the way around? Just trying to attack this front cone on the open side, grinding. Trying to win the matchups. I take that back. This near side line is the break side by the looks of this. Haynes now. That very colourful cap to Colt Hammer. Oh, that's a beautiful flick. Is that in? Some of the players in the field saying that it wasn't quite in bounds, but it might be some balletic footwork, toe drag swag. I thought that was in. Looked into me. Looked like his uh, back foot was down in the end zone when he caught it. Cam Weir has done a good job on this point. He's one of the younger players on this team, and they, he, he's been uh, drawn the Cami Agnew match. And has done a good job running him round. Just a quick discussion here about whether it's in or out. Well, we don't have our replays with our slightly more... Which, what, what are we calling this? A, 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 the, the true hero stream. Strip We've, we down. Strip down, strip back, yeah. The simplicity. When we get another look, because we can scrubble back. That does look good on our scrubble back on replay. You can also do that yourself. Hit the pause and like you know use the little arrow buttons on your keyboard or double tap on your screen if you're on a mobile device. But after discussion, that's going to be not called a goal. But now it will be as Hodgett just hits that front cone nice and easy, does it. And that will take us into double digits for Chevy. 10-6 now leading over Alba. And deservedly so, I think, Sean. Yeah, they're doing really well to... Uh, not only are they doing really well when they have the disc, they've made a couple more mistakes in the early part of the second half than they did in the in the first, really. But they're doing well with the disc, but they're doing very, very well without the disc because Alba's D-line has had a couple of opportunities in this early in the second half, but they haven't been able to take it because the pressure that the Chevrolet O-line is putting on them defensively is really, really good. And Alba's D-line struggling, getting into high stall situations. We saw that one with Jinx where he's had to take one to the air, uh, just take a shot at the end zone because he was in a high stall. They're doing a really good job of just locking everything down and preventing the breaks from happening just with sheer pressure and really aggressively preventing any movement from Alba whatsoever. So, And the movement they are getting is kind of backwards negative yards into not threatening positions. So the Chev O-line not only doing, doing well with the disc, but they're doing very well defensively. Well, clearly the bagpipe's not quite... So you drop the microphone. Not quite having the restorative effect that they would have hoped to they are back this season but i'm really enjoying the creativity that chevron are able to bring out when they have to hit the brake side a couple of scubas some some interesting choices as well alongside but it does seem that they have that extra little bit of edge of confidence and belief certainly they talked about their slow start this morning they've changed that they'd managed to warm themselves properly up into this game so they can go out and execute it seems like from some of the discussions on the sideline and the body language that Alba are yet to find that belief. So you see Mackey hitting that far side on the break side. Lovely scoop inside flick to hit him. Terry, who's been anchoring in the hand, the set now finding himself upfield, waiting for his moment. 
McNeil puts one up on a piece of string to the back corner. Oh, that is such a nice throw, and that will do very nicely. Thank you much. Yeah, what a great shot from Ali McNeil. There's a very small space that he can hit there. Penny is underneath Lindsay, kind of taking away a lot of that space. The only space that you can get into, the only, the only area you can throw into to get it to him is basically over Penny's right shoulder, right out in front of the receiver. It's a very narrow window, beautifully executed. Nice shot, nice score, nice hold. Uh, Albert back out on D, and they will hope that they get the disc back again and can make a bit more progress than they were able to on the last couple. Well, have Chevron done enough in the first half? Three breaks to none. Thus far, just trading our way through the second stages here. 10-7 the score. Both of Alba's holds have been clean in the second half, whereas both of Chevy's holds have come with a turnover. We talked at halftime about they only had one turnover in the whole first half on offense, so already two in the, in the second. I think there is a little bit more hunger, but certainly we're seeing some power lines being played coming out into the second half by Alba. You cannot do that, I think, for an entire second half. They've got a shorter squad just by the numbers of who they've brought here to Nottingham. And they are young. Generally, I think probably the average age of Alba might be a little bit, you know, a bit lower. Leon Williams has been cleaning up all over the place stats board-wise and certainly appearing on the pitch again and again and again. Back out there on D now. Yeah, you're right. He's had a really good game so far and they're leaning on him, leaning on Joel Terry to try and get back into the game. So, Cami Agnew with a disc in hand, ready to get us underway. A little bit of adjustment and pause. A solid fielding. Hodgett just shy of the brick. Sweetenham opens up another big old huck into the end zone and a great execution once more. You can see a little slide from Benjamin Tang, who hasn't really appeared much on the field for Alba, but just gets roofed. Yeah, another under 24, Benjamin Tang, but that was out of the hand from Sweetenham. It looked like it was sitting a bit much, put a bit too much air and spin on it, but that car right went up and made that look, those concerns look like uh, nothing at all. Just plucks it out of the air. Nice score, nice athleticism from uh, Deck Cartwright. He definitely had steps. You could see he planted his foot and went, and Tang was just underneath in the whole way. Sweetenham was winding up as soon as he planted his foot, basically. And Sweetenham has been really taking those hucks. He's one of the only people on Chev that's been throwing uh, that th or that many deep shots. So there was one from... Uh, there was one from... Uh, one of that criddle, I think it was, was a bit too flat, a bit too low, that was knocked away. But that's Sweetenham, four assists, and I think three of those have been hucks. So, uh, big game for Sweetenham so far. Well, the big game moments. It looks like we're going to get another of those iconic finals that we're so used to seeing. Chevron Action Flash, of course. Always the bridesmaids, never the bride. It feels like at UK Nationals level. There was four Alba players just walking off the pitch while the pull was in the air. That was very strange. Very bizarre indeed. But of course, Chevy won't need to call a violation. Because it seems like that's more of a, a sign of dejection from this Scottish side. Which they don't need to. They've still got time to generate the comeback here. They're only the three breaks down of score and they have the advantage. They started this game on offense. Dick centering around to Terry. McNeil, who threw that peach of a throw. A few points ago. Lindsay now looking a little bit lost for options. Stool count rising, but good movement around the back. Solid from Joel Terry and pops one to the far corner. That is a very slick hold for Alba, but they're going to have to find a little bit more depth on defense. Yeah, it was a nice hold. It was a good poach from Seb Allen to stop some down uh, movement down the field, but Alba took advantage of it, worked it out to Ali McNeil on the far side, on the break side, and then worked down that break side, and a really nice throw to the front cone. Looks like he's wide open. That's because it's the on the break side, exactly where the D is trying to avoid them going. But Albert moved this quickly enough and efficiently enough that they were able to hit Webb nice and easy on the 
at the front of the end zone. So 11-8 now. 11-8. But as you said, Hannah, Alba really need to start converting these chances they're getting into breaks. Mackey is the offensive player that's staying out with the D-line now. They've had one player from the O-line staying out on, a, on the D-line every single time in this second half. As we said, the first point they had several of them put out a proper power line and then three since they've had one offensive player out there we've seen Terry we've seen Williams and now we're seeing Mackey so they are really really focusing on trying to get these breaks and with the exception of Sweetenham who's been eating up the stats board with those absolutely gorgeous throws it's been a relatively well distributed affair for Chevron Playing through pretty much all their athletes. And most people have a stat on the board. Sweetenham, far sideline. You're going to open it up the cannon. Nope. Just an easy one to Colt Hammer. There's a collision in the center of the pack and a slip from the person who surely was marking Colt Hammer. Stuart Jinks has been matching up with him a couple of times. Yeah, it was a slip. His feet came out from under him as Colt Hammer made a made a change of direction, tried to change and just hit the deck. But there was uh, someone knocked over in the middle of the stack as well. But coming in with Colt Hammer, Criddle seeking options upfield. This is more containment, squeezed down the far sideline. But Chevy are happy to play through it, and it's an easy one for Sweetenham, just uh, scuttling to the far sideline. That's open side as well. That, that D is definitely not what Alba would have wanted because that looked easy for Chevron. They got one pass out. Uh, you saw Colt Hammer make a change of direction and jinx at the deck. Uh, it just needs to be needs to be tight and needs to be a bit more switched on. Uh, they've been doing really well defensively, but that was a that was a pretty pretty bad one from uh, Alba's perspective there. Well, they said in their previous games they got a little bit fired up, but it's been a yeah. Uh, some moments they've missed, I think. Certainly, they had a strong start against uh, Smash D, but then let them come back into the game. So maybe kind of a little bit of a ghost of that moment of they haven't quite hit their proper top level of gears. But, of course, you only have to stay within the top six to advance to EUCF later on the season. And Albert, of course, got their first taste of finals last year. So maybe they'll have to settle for a 3-4 game. Yeah, three, four games still, still obviously very good. Uh, this team, I would expect, is still going to go to Vratslav. Uh, so they'll be testing themselves against the, the best teams in Europe again. But you can see kind of, uh, you mentioned body language earlier, Hannah, and you can see the players on the Alba sideline, a lot of hands on hips, a lot of heads down, feeling like perhaps they're, it's not their day. They're not going to get back into this one. Whereas Chev, a lot of clapping, a lot of encouraging each other. And uh, it's another strong D line out for Chev because we've got Ben Barak and Tom Hodgett, both of whom have played offense in the very recent past for Chev, and they're out on this line. Well, maybe some experimentation. We certainly are expecting to see that out of uh, who will surely be advancing over Bristol. Of course, that's Clapham. They'll be looking to add another star to their jerseys. They're going to have to. They're going to start making patches soon. They've had so many iterations of kit with a different number of stars. I'm supposed to make capes soon. They're going to have so many stars. They need to like different things to put them on. No, I, I reckon some varsity jackets. And then when you run out of space on the outside, you can start putting on the inside lining as well. Of course, we we hate to love the fact that that campaign has been running for such a long time. But who knows? Maybe. Maybe we could see a change coming as that one is going to go nowhere near Leon Williams. Bit of a uh, bit of contact. Both both players seemingly happy with it. But yeah, the throw is just over his head. Didn't didn't get a chance there. But as we say that, Hodgett throws to Roger Williams and is saying there was contact from uh, from Webb on the throw. And Webb disagrees. Of course, two Williamses who were marking each other until a very recent moment with a switch off after that turnover changes things up. But I'm sure no relation? Nope, no relation. Roger Williams from Exeter was an air badger. Uh, Leon Williams, I think, is Scottish. Uh, obviously playing for a Scottish team. I'm not 100% sure where he's from, but no, no relation. Well, maybe if we can, f I'll, I'll see if I can find the research on that one. Yes, all right. He obviously played at the under-24s with the with mixed while Roger Williams was playing open. 
He was a, a key handler, Roger Williams, for the Open team, kind of an offensive handler, the centre of a lot of what they did. And then with uh, GB Open, became kind of one of their main reset defenders. Was on the D-line a lot, but Chevron with the disc, their D-line back in now. So Tom Martin Hall. He's centred it to Seb Hart and Tom Hodgett has found space from Webb. Chevron taking their time. Just eating up yards and there's a call downfield, a pick from the sounds of it. And Joel Terry kind of has pulled up while the, while the pick was called. I would expect that. Uh, I would expect that that's going to stay with Seb Hart. And Hannah has completed the research, so I'll hand the mic back over to her shortly. But Steve Dixon... Catches that, toes it in. That's another break for Chevron. And that, with Apple trying to get back in the game by stacking D lines, one thing you can't do is keep, take your eye off the prize and give up a break. Well, I think that was uh, a pretty handy way to punch another one in. And too shy of seeing themselves into finals tomorrow morning. There's just the one game to play for the Open Division all of tomorrow. Heavy GC today, though, so perhaps a little bit of tiredness going into the legs of Alba, who do have that slightly shorter roster. So, yes, to bring you the fun facts about Leon Williams, we did indeed have some research on him. So he's a, a tender age, 22-year-old. Just a baby. A bit of Taylor Swift action for you. But, uh, indeed, he's from Edinburgh originally. He's been playing for five years. And uh, he's actually the same height as I am. Oh. Five foot nine and three quarters. It's very tall, in my opinion. <laughs> but yes, he's also, um, then this is my favourite thing about the, the player server that he very kindly filled in for us earlier in the season. He's uh, unemployed and proud, which means he can dedicate all of his time to, uh, to playing ultimate. I mean, I'm sure he'll be uh, slinging his, you know, not slinging his hook, what's the word? He'll be, I'm sure he'll be applying to get something because ultimate's not a cheap sport to play. Well, unless you're rich. It's still not cheap. Well, but if, if it's, it's all, you know... It's all relative, isn't it? If, if you're a millionaire, then flying to, well, say flying, getting the trains in Nottingham is well cheap. But uh, I'm not a millionaire, and I, if he's unemployed, I would suspect that Leon Williams is also not. Or maybe he's, maybe he's unemployed because he is a millionaire. I don't know. I'm not making any judgments as to Leon Williams' financial situation. But uh, what I can say is he's been playing very well in this game. Well, either way, I think well, uh, the main the main point of uh, maybe not having a full nine to five to keep you occupied and have you sat at a desk all day for your hip flexors to become more and more cemented into each other, it's uh, it's certainly an athlete who's able to spend a lot of time committing to you know developing his skills and certainly his speed. He's been all over the shop today, but he used to play badminton at international level. Yeah, I can see that. Quick, quick change of the direction, very shifty. I can see that. Shifty indeed. Well, there you go. We, we now know a lot more about Leon Williams than we did before. The other Williams, of course, on the opposite side of things, Rodri Williams, also 22 years old. So uh, a brother from another Williams family, as it were, started playing, as you already mentioned, Sean, for Air Badgers. He's a Devon lad and he's uh, currently coaches the University of Sheffield. Greatest, greatest academic institution in the world, that's what I heard about the University of Sheffield. To be fair, there's been some pretty good ultimate players that have come out of there. And some good commentators, I heard. <laughs> and of course, home, Ponds Forge, home of many in indoor, not international, indoor ultimate frisbee competitions. And of course, this the pinnacle of the UKU outdoor season. We'll be switching back to indoors soon enough because the weather here will turn very unpleasant for a game of ultimate in a couple of weeks. We see a rather elongated walk of the pull back in. And to answer you in the live chat, Patrick, we do not have any live scores from the other semi-final in terms of volunteer scorekeepers. But if you want to get more score updates, feel free to volunteer to come and help out at UKU Ultimate Events. Because we can't bring you those live scores unless we have scorekeepers on the sidelines. All of these games are being self-scored, including this one on our live stream, technically speaking. We are helping, though. Big shout out to uh, Statsman Andy. Dick on the far sideline, grinding their way through our Alba to try and just notch another couple on the scoreboard. Terry rising high and claims that one on the far side. And you can see there's a little bit of frustration in Terry's body language. 
Yeah, I wonder what that is. Is that, is that contact? He's saying there's contact? Because he's definitely unhappy about something, considering he's just scored. Although there is a the smile on his face from what I can see, but... Uh, this, I would imagine someone's getting a low score for Thousand Body Contact, because there's been a lot of discussion about that in this game. Yeah, to, to put it diplomatically. So this one seems all but wrapped up. The scoreboard on the far sideline has not been changed yet. 39 Chevron Action Flash, two points away from another berth into finals. And we've been talking about Chevron, sorry, Alba, stacking their D-lines and trying to, get that, uh, trying to get that break back. They've been doing it for a while of bringing an offensive player over, and this is the first point in a little bit where they're playing basically a straight D-line. So that kind of gives you an, uh, an idea of where Alba see the game at the moment. It's not quite the same situation there in three points ago. I tell you what, they've not changed the scoreboard on the far sideline, so we might have to remind the players exactly what the score should be as we see Haynes streaking towards the far side. Morel underneath. I tell you what, that's not Morel. <laughs> that's Josh Hannum. Hodge it. Easy one around to Criddle. But a pick upfield. Things getting a little bit messy as the day drags on. Back in, just trying to grind to this near sideline. To Cartwright. That's a big old return for the swing. Climb through to sweeten him. Pick called, I have, or foul call, sorry. I heard the uh, Albert defender say, I feel like you ran through me. So uh, it's a foul, but he has retracted it. Well, you've got to call him as you see him. And you can indeed retract, and that's what's happened here. Sideline didn't like it though, there was a decided small boo, but that is very nice indeed. No boos, who's, unless you're an Alba fan, in which case you're seeing your opponents go 49 up. They've missed a score on the far scoreboard if that makes it onto our camera. But uh, one point away from a finals berth, our Chevron action flash. Yeah, really nice cut from Josh Kime there, kind of started off lateral, saw his defender on his heels and curved his run upfield to give himself a power position and just continued the disc into the end zone. The offense doing a very good job of keeping the disc moving and Alba seemingly struggling to kind of generate any pressure there. I don't think any stall got more than four, maybe five at any point in that point, at any juncture in that point. Uh, yeah, it was just a very, very efficient offense from Chev who have been very impressive. They have not been broken all game after a kind of a run of turnovers and the first two offensive points they uh, they turned over in both of those in the second half haven't turned it over since that's three nice clean holds and the the break they got also clear also clean so two only two turnovers for Chev in the second half which is pretty impressive all con all things considered well yeah and three for the entire game that is uh they are looking looking pretty good do you do you back them to take a goal here if they can continue this form no <laughs> be fair ahead of this one we'd look very silly if we changed our minds at this juncture but it's the only thing we hope for is compelling games we have no stakes really as to who will best who terry on the far side oh that's going to be way too far surely it is indeed i think he's getting a little bit frustrated and taking it out on gregor stewart who's no way to connect with that but swinging it around the back heart pops through williams Dixon. A little bit jinking around the disc. Has to puncture through to Seb Allen. Wants that up line. Takes it very late in the stall count. Terry nearly stops him. Well, there's going to be a call of out of bounds by Cameron Mackey. It's really close. It looked like Seb Hart did a really good job of keeping his feet in. 
Uh, it's a fair enough call, I think, because it looks like it was have been pretty close, but it did look into me, and you could see Seb Allen getting a little bit more frustrated as there's no options, and it looks like Seb Hart was just out, but uh, he did a great effort. Well, Joel Terry bring us back in, immediately boosting it, has Mackie underneath, but that's going to have a pack developing, possibly. Nope, Mackie goes up, very nice and strong, the big man, and there is Andrew Dick in the end zone, just a quick movement one-on-one -on -one, and that's a long last and another on the board for Alba yeah just a hold though so it's uh they're going to need more they're going to need to start stacking lines now because they are 14 10 down and it's game to 15 so one point away Chev they have five chances to win it on offense it's not Impossible, not unheard of, but given how well the Chev O-line has been playing and given how tough Alba have found it to convert the chances they've had into those breaks, uh, it looks unlikely, I would say, at this point. One also, I think the other fact to consider is the, the number of times that you've seen Alba come out with a power line over and over and over again they've been putting people on whether it's a micro power line where they're just having an o-line player just to center things if they generate a turnover or it has been some proper ones that they've been going out with but uh what do you reckon this time sean yeah, it looks like three o-line players out there mackie williams and terry they're all staying out there cami agnew still on there jinx steedman and i can't see the final one it looks like is it delaney so yeah this is a strong line for Alba, trying to get trying to get one of those all important breaks and stop Chev winning the game here. No, of course your score lines don't matter in the championship bracket. It's just true knockout stuff. Can they knock Chevron off the perch? Colt Hammer seeking an opportunity. Stall count starting to get high. Just lends one out, nearly the block from the hands of Stuart Jinx, but just not able to get in front of Spears in the last moments. Kime puts a lot of air underneath it, but a switch off gives it time. Little cheeky slide. That one goes way right through the pack and bit dialed in, Mackie capitalizes. Now this, certainly for pride, but possibly for the start of a comeback. Mackie with a beautiful flick, finding Joel Terry with nobody anywhere near. Yeah, they did a really good job with picking it up and just going immediately. It seems like no one on Chevron other than Sweetenham can huck because we had Sam Criddle throw one that was very similar, that was too flat, too low. Not quite getting there. That one from, uh, from Josh Keim, too flat, too low. Not quite getting there. Uh, now they pick it up immediately and take advantage of the fact that the Chev offense has not set their D. Run through, no one picks up Joel Terry. Joel Terry wide open in the end zone and a nice throw from Mackie to find him. And I do hope they correct that score because Alba don't have as many breaks to find as they think they do. Yeah, I've just, just gone and informed uh, one of the UK youth staff, Nathan Fowler, to go down and inform Chevron and Alba that they managed to miss a point because we do have four stats being taken for this game. Stats man Andy coming in. Local, a local flight club player. Of course, many flight club players helping out at this Highfields Nottingham event. And the sun is a shining. It's, it's actually, I'm not going to say it's warm because it's still quite chilly in the breeze here, Sean. But uh, this is nice conditions to play games of Ultimate. It is. It's very light wind. It's really not been a very windy day for, uh, any, at any point. There's been no really difficult uh, points, which is nice because that means you can see the teams playing all the offense that they, they want to do. You know, they're not taking anything off the, off the table because there's no... The, the, the conditions aren't ready for it so yeah it's just nice it's good good to watch both teams play some nice stuff so we have communicated with the players on the field that it is 11 14 or 14 11 you should say the higher school first so Perhaps that might inject a little bit of a hope into Alba. You never know. Or maybe some more determination into Chevron. Perhaps some uh, naysayers on the far sideline. They don't believe us. <laughs> but a big hammer. Finding Colt Hammer. Nominative determinism, perhaps. Criddle. Looks all too easy. Oh, but a drop for Spears. 
Big opportunity now. Dick on the far sideline. Has options available in the deep space that big old poach off. That one a little bit quirky, but good connection to Cameron Agnew who makes the adjustment and finds a visionary pocket on the far sideline. Can Alba make anything of this and start the comeback really firing? Dick available late in the stool. Good discipline upfield. Not everybody all at once, all the time. Fakes the overhead. Just throws a soft one into space for Dick. I love that execution. Oh, a big old toss over the pack. Ups goes to Cameron Agnew. And one of the captains there for this Alba side getting things underway well. We'll have to get someone up to check our scores because uh, no one's applied the additional point over on the far sideline. But that should be 14-12, Sean. 14-12 and a, a point for Chev where they got it all the way down to the, the end zone. Looked like they were going to finish this game nice and quickly and just a drop. And after the drop, they were quite soft on some of the coverage on this far side. There was wide open space. And they're looking up, looking up at us to check the score. We have a stat, Bevan. We've got the stats keeper. We He's literally been doing have everything. all the scores here. We've got full stats going. So all the passes, yep. all the scores are being recorded. You, miss, you definitely missed one. So it was, we were up by five. I can show you the thing when you've got your thoughts there. Yeah. You can come look. So a bit of a bit of discussion with the sideline ourselves. It is, I mean, we do have all of the stats being taken, and we can watch the one, watch the game back later on. It is recorded for posterity. We can find out who's correct, who's wrong. If we've missed something, if we've added something. But uh, I back us. I back our stats. Either way, it's all Chevys to take. They only have to put the one on the board. Hodgett on the far sideline to Criddle. Sweetenham after the race is downfield, but Haynes in absolute wide open acreage. Now collects a mark from Terry. Hodge it up line. Pick for pause. But Chevy find themselves in all of the space. They just need to keep hold of the Frisbee. Yeah, there was a, a shame there. Deck Cartwright had loads of space, had set his cut up beautifully, and then his feet just went out from underneath him. And that's that opportunity gone. But Hodgett resets nicely, offers Haynes a good option, and Chevy are in a really, really good position here. Well, a beautiful throw that goes up, but there's a block underneath it. I'll tell you what, they may be, maybe, maybe. Stuart Jinx getting the block. And Albert are back in this game. It feels like 14-12. It's a great block by Stuart Jinx. That looked like it was Criddles all day. And Jinx makes up the space, goes up high, and knocks it away. Nice stuff. So, Terry getting us underway. Big grab out of the sky from Steedman. And Cameron Agnew now lasers it across to Jinx. There is an opportunity in the end zone. Fakes the hammer, just pops it to Terry instead. Now Agnew. Oh, surely that's another goal for Alba. What is happening, Sean? They, they couldn't convert for the whole game on D. And all of a sudden, they get one opportunity and they're taking it every single time they are all the way back in this game they only need two more breaks that's three in a row that three in a row and they are right back in this game now 14 13. well and 13 the number of the scoring player there can Alba do it? That is four on the trot here. They're taking much more expansive passes as well. It was almost like they kind of decided, ah, well, let's just throw caution to the wind and just throw stuff that's open. And they have people open on the sidelines and they're throwing across the field with 
over the top. There was one there you saw Cami Agnew kind of step backwards, almost like a disc golf inside flick across the pitch. They're just throwing to open spaces. It's very aggressive. It might not work all the time, particularly against a team as good as Chevron, but at the moment, they are making hay while the going is good, and they are right back in this. Oh, well, thrills and spills as this not really hot sun here in Nottingham, even though it is late August. Bank holiday weekend for the local players. Of course, we get fans watching from all over the place. So if you're enjoying this live stream, let us know where you're tuning in from. It's a slightly uh, pulled back version of our normal coverage. But we're bringing it to you all the same. And this is getting... A little bit scary for Chevy. Kaim and Morel anchoring at the back. Can we? Just trying to play it nice and easy. There's good switching downfield. The player's trying to open up some room. Morel gets a little bit of a head touch. Oh, that's got a beautiful touch on it. And that will at long last end the game. The perfect throw from Ethan Morel finding Cam Weir and sealing it off after such a charge from Albert. But massive respect to the lads from the north. That was quite the end of the game. Yeah, they did a really good job bringing it back, considering they were struggling so much to execute defensively and get the disc off Chevron. Chevron's O was absolutely wonderful for most of that second half. And then that run of three breaks, pulling them all the way back into it. But fair play to Chev, keeping their heads. Ethan Morrell with a lovely shot to end the game. And a really good performance from Chevron. They go into the final to see Clapham yet again. A uh, game that we've seen many times. But it looks like they're, in, they're, they're playing pretty well at the moment. If they can bring that offensive performance from most of the second half into the final, they will at least give themselves a good shot. Yeah, no, a lovely shot indeed to the end zone. I have to say, there was it was just the overcommitment on the bid. Massive shout out to Biddy1983. Watching from Northern Ireland and this uh, British-Scottish affair. But thank you so much for tuning in, folks. We will be right back with another game for you. We are bouncing over once more to the women's division. It's going to be a bristol Iceni matchup, which... Two big teams again, certainly closing off pool stages for the women's division. But for myself, Hannah Pendlebury, for Sean Colfer, for Nicholas Ho, and all of our hard working Ulti TV crew trying to bring you this coverage, tech be damned. We will see you for the next one in a couple of minutes.